Hello. Let's find some Nadia cats. Yeah, so obviously this video is going to be a little bit different. There was a significant amount of real world work in order to find this cut, and I decided it would be too difficult to explain all that using just blocks of text like I usually do. So I'm just going to explain all of it in person and I hope that it doesn't take too long. I'm sorry that I'm filming this using my laptop camera. I'm not exactly going to go and buy a fancy camera and microphone just for one video. I know that for some reason I don't exactly have the best reputation for high quality videos. But don't worry, I'm going to render this in 1080p. The Trackmania Nations Forever campaign has been around since 2008. This campaign has 65 maps, one of which is EO2 Endurance. This maze of a map takes about 4 minutes to complete and is the cut hunter's wet dream of Nadia tracks. This track had multiple no cut world records in the first couple of years after it was released. The most notable of which is obviously Kajin. Kajin with a time of 4 minutes and 6.43 seconds, which he got in 2010. This was equally infamously beaten by Kabak. Kabak? One year later, who got the first cut world record, beating Kayan by less than half a second. Kabach's cut route has three cuts. Using this route, the world record was progressively improved over the next few years, eventually landing on a time of 3 minutes and 54.63 seconds by Howie Flyer, in 2016. Huffy Flyer also managed to get the no cut world record of 4 minutes and 1.46 seconds, which remains the world record today. But about a month ago, Virtual found an even faster cut. The new cut route has 5 cuts, and so far Virtual has managed to get a time of 3 minutes 48.59 seconds. This cut route has the potential to save 8 or 9 more seconds if you've got a perfect run. So let's just say for now there's possible to get a time of about 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Every time there's a new cut on EO2, someone always asks the question, is there a faster cut? I decided that it's about time we found out. I'm going to show you how I did it, just a warning, there is a bit of maths. But I promise you that if you stick around to the end, I'll show you that the results are worth it. If you really, really want to skip all of that, uh, I'll leave a timestamp in the description and you can click on that and just watch the final results. At first glance, EO2 is pretty complicated. Just quickly, I thought it might be useful to help understand the map just a little bit better. This map can be broken down into sections where each section kind of has its own unique character. I like to think of EO2 as having a backbone like the trunk of a tree where each section branches out from that trunk. This is section 1, which has the first three checkpoints and is arguably the most technically difficult section. You then go up to section 2 for two more checkpoints. This is a pretty long section for only two checkpoints, and it's pretty high up, meaning it has a lot of potential for saving time with cuts. Section 3 has four checkpoints, two on the top level and two on a level underneath. Section 4 has three checkpoints and is kind of shaped like a club out of a deck of cards. We call it the zigzag section because there's a lot of weaving side to side. Just note that this is on the second lowest level, so it's very easy to jump into the section, but it isn't very easy to jump out of the section. Section 5 has another 4 checkpoints, and it's situated right alongside section 3, so there's a lot of potential to do both of these sections together. Finally, section 6 is like the tail of this Nadia beast, and it has the last 3 checkpoints. We call this one the NASCAR section, because you have to release around the corners rather than drift. It does look very cool, but it's actually the easiest section of the map by far. Though you do have to be very careful with the last jump, which is right next to the start. The backbone itself has 6 checkpoints, bringing the total to 25 checkpoints. For each section, you drive out from the backbone, complete the section, and then drive back to the backbone, usually through the same place you came in. Going in and out of the backbone takes time. So one of the main conceptual ideas of cutting EO2 is to drive all of the backbone at once and to cut from section to section. This skips the part of the track that connects each section to the backbone. 
this map, there is a start line, which I've numbered 0. Then there are 25 checkpoints, which I've numbered in the order that you're supposed to do. Finally, you have to go to the finish line, which I've numbered 26. So what I want to know is how many connections there are in theory. From the start, there are 25 possible options. The only place you can't go is the finish line. From each of the 25 checkpoints, say checkpoint 7 for example, you can go to one of the other 24 checkpoints or the finish line. There's obviously no point going back to the start. This makes a total of 650 connections. Obviously, the majority of these connections are completely useless. For example, going from checkpoint 2 to checkpoint 8 would not only waste a lot of time, but may also be impossible to do without first going through several other checkpoints along the way. As a side note, this doesn't necessarily mean that you can't go through the same checkpoint twice, or even that it's a bad thing. In fact, the No Cut World Record and the current world record both go through checkpoint 1 twice. So the first thing I did was study every single checkpoint one at a time and figure out which other checkpoints you could feasibly So the first thing I did was study every checkpoint one at a time and figure out which other checkpoints you could get to feasibly within a reasonable amount of time. This is the first of a few approximations that I made, which I'll explain as I go. Each approximation that I apply increases the chance that I'm going to miss the optimum cut route. So for example, from the start you can get to checkpoint 1, checkpoint 3, checkpoint 4, and doing the map backwards you can get to checkpoint 25. You can also make some quick cuts to checkpoint 5, checkpoint 14, and checkpoint 24. Then at the limit of what is probably feasible, I also decided to include checkpoint 15, though this is probably redundant because you can cut to checkpoint 14 much more quickly. This is a total of 8 possible paths from the start line. For some checkpoints, particularly the ones on the ground level, there are only 2 possible paths, one forwards and one backwards, but for checkpoints like checkpoint 17, I could only reduce it down to about 15 possible paths. In the end, on average, there are about 8 or 9 possible paths for each position. This is still a lot, but it brought the total number of connections down from 650 to about 225. Now it's time for the fun part. So, I drove every single one of these 225 connections, or maybe like 3 quarters, in order to estimate how much time each one will take. I decided to begin by doing each connection in the fastest way possible. So you would enter the checkpoint with the best possible, yet realistic, speed to try and get the best possible sector to the target checkpoint. Even if I arrive at the checkpoint with completely shitty speed, obviously this may not end up being the best way to do each sector. It may not even be possible to do it that way, because it matters which direction you came from before your starting point as to how much speed you've got. I'm going to talk a bit more about that later. This is just the starting point. I do, I do want to just say that some of the sectors that I drove were just gorgeous. <laughs> I, I would never be able to do them again. They were just works of art. shame that most of them turned out to be completely useless, but never mind. I also got a lot of help from Virtual and Ryzo. Virtual drove the really hard ones for me, so thank you for your help. So in the end, I made a matrix with the estimates for each sector. So I left the diagonal of this matrix with zeros 
and I put large values for all of the connections that were not feasible. So now what? If you look at the numbers, a root looks like this, where 0 and 26 are fixed, but you can do the other 25 checkpoints in any order that you want. Doing the no-cut run looks like this, doing the map backwards. Doing the map backwards looks like this, the kebabs 3 cut route looks like this, and the virtual 5 cut route looks like this. But there are other ways to arrange these numbers. In fact, there are 25 factorial ways to arrange these numbers. 25 factorial is approximately 15 million billion billion possible permutations. But I reduced the total number of connections by about two thirds. And that doesn't just reduce the total number of permutations by two thirds, it reduces it by a fuck ton. So all I need to do is figure out every single permutation, plug in the sector times, and I've got my answer. Except it's not that easy to figure out every single permutation. If you consider the scenario where checkpoint 24 can only go to either checkpoint 23 or checkpoint 25, if I'm mapping out a route and I've already gone to checkpoint 23 and checkpoint 25, then when I finally get to checkpoint 24 there's nowhere left to go. So I decided to write a piece of code that would just brute force it. Basically the code would start at checkpoint 0, the start line, it would find the number of possible paths and then pick one at random. Then from that checkpoint, it would find the number of possible paths that are remaining and pick one at random again. At every step I was making sure not to go back to a checkpoint that's already been done before. This keeps going until you've gone through all of the checkpoints and reached the finish line, or until you reach a dead end. In about 999 out of a thousand cases it would reach a dead end, but in the remaining case you'd find a solution. There are probably faster and more efficient ways to do this, but since it's been done by a computer, I didn't really consider it a problem. Every time it found a solution, I made it check to see if it had found that solution before. Since I'm finding solutions completely randomly, eventually it's going to start finding the same solution more than once. So I measured how many times it was finding new, unique solutions, and how many times it was finding repeated solutions. The idea is that at the beginning it will find basically only unique solutions. At some point later on when it's finding repeated solutions approximately 50% of the time, I'll know that I've found about 50% of the solutions. Eventually, the proportion of new, unique solutions that it will find will slow down and stop, and I'll only find repeated solutions. Since there's so many connections I was expecting to find thousands, if not tens of thousands of solutions, this could take some time, so I set the code running overnight. So in the morning I checked how far it had progressed, and um... Up to that point, it had found 500,000 solutions. This would still be okay, uh, except the number of repeated solutions that I had found so far was four. This was not the case. There were far more permutations than I expected. Since I reduced the average number of connections between each checkpoint from 25 down to 8, I assumed at first that the number of possible paths would go down from 25 factorial permutations to 8 factorial permutations. And 8 factorial is only 40,000. But that's not actually right at all. See, 25 factorial is actually 25p25. And going down to 8 connections means that the total number of permutations is not 8p8, but 25p8. So instead of getting about 40,000 permutations, it was probably going to be more like 10 billion. So even if I was finding half a million solutions every day, it would take over 50 years. Except also it's finding the solutions randomly, which means the number of unique solutions it finds every day would continually go down and down. So I could write a bit of code, perhaps that's always possible, but I decided that this wasn't working. It's time for plan B. So there's a very famous problem in maths called the travelling salesman problem. This problem imagines a salesman who wants to travel to a large number of cities, say across America. The original question is, what's the optimal path to travel to every city once and return to your original city using the least possible distance along the way? You can probably see how this is relevant to our situation. The reason that I mentioned it is that, conveniently enough, there are a number of tools online that anybody can use to solve this problem. 
MATLAB has some inbuilt functions that you can use to solve the travelling salesman problem, which look like this. At the end, you can see that it found the best possible route through all of these cities. But I needed to do a couple of modifications. First, there needs to be a fixed start and end point. Second, I needed to change the weighting system so that it was possible to have a different weight depending on which direction you travel from one checkpoint to another. Luckily, I found a piece of code online which does exactly these two things for me, thank you to Joseph Kirk. So I set up Kirk's code with my matrix of sector times, and all I had to do was press the button. So this was good for finding paths with really fast sectors, but I needed to do a few things first in order to get realistic solutions. As I mentioned before, all of the sector times are the fastest possible way to get from checkpoint to checkpoint. So in the early solutions that I was getting, basically what the code was seeing was that you could drive with maximum speed up to the checkpoint and then immediately do a 180 degree turn in the opposite direction with maximum speed. So I checked how much time it would take to do a 180 turn. It actually varies from checkpoint to checkpoint depending on how much speed you've got, but it turns out to be something like three and a half seconds. So I adapted the code so that it would check every single member of the population to see if it contained one of these 180 turns. If it did, I would add a three and a half second penalty. So I had to make the code check against a list of bad checkpoint combinations. So as well as 180 turns, I added any combination of checkpoints which would cost time relative to my matrix of sector times. This was usually where a cut would cause you to arrive at the checkpoint with slow speed. In some cases, doing a cut would cause the next cut to be impossible because of your low speed. I couldn't always be certain of how much time each bad combination would cost. So if I was really unsure, I would just test it by driving it in the game. Sometimes I would penalize just one second and other times it would be like a hundred seconds to make sure that it never came up. Unfortunately there was no way to automate writing the list of bad combinations. So every time I got a final solution from the code, I would have to manually check it and see if it contained a bad combination that hadn't come up yet, and then add it to the list. In the end, the list contained some 300 combinations, so it took a long time to filter them all out. But, eventually, I was rewarded with the perfect, most optimum route for EO2 Endurance. I was interested mainly in solutions that were faster than the current world record of 3 minutes and 48 seconds. And there wasn't just one of them, there were actually hundreds. This made me wonder why we'd never found any of these routes before, but it's, it's really hard to find a route just by staring at the map. And even if you did, it would be really hard to know if it was faster or not until you tried it. You can also consider the fact that there are billions of possible solutions, and if you picked one at random, the probability of it being faster than the current world record is extremely low. For now, the main question I wanted to ask was, what's the easiest route which is still fast enough to beat the current world record? And the answer is that you need four cuts to do it. And this is it. I know that it's probably not the most elegant way of showing this, this was just the lazy way for me to show all the necessary information with minimum effort. I have a replay to help guide you through this solution. So it starts with immediately cutting to section 2. Grab checkpoint 5 and then take a slightly modified path to get checkpoint 6. Then you do the second cut to checkpoint 15. You can jump into checkpoint 15 from either side, but either way you're going to do section 4 in reverse getting checkpoint 14 and then checkpoint 13. Then do a 180 turn at checkpoint 12 and go to checkpoint 16. After this you're going to enter section 5 and get all 4 checkpoints in a completely normal way. When you leave section 5, grab checkpoints 21 and 22 and then do the third cut to section 1 right next to checkpoint 2. You then complete section 1 also as normal. After getting checkpoint 4, you can skip section 2 because it's already done, and go straight to checkpoint 7. Here you enter section 3, and do another 180 turn at checkpoint 8. Complete the rest of section 3 in reverse order, first checkpoint 11, then 10, then 9. Finally, do the fourth cut directly to the NASCAR section, and get the last three checkpoints and finish. Now, if your immediate reaction was, How the fuck am I supposed to remember all that? My response is, just try it. I guarantee you that it's fairly intuitive, and after an hour of training or so, you'll get the hang of it and you won't get lost. 
You may be thinking that the solution looks kind of clunky and slow. You have to do two really slow 180 turns and you arrive at the faster section, the NASCAR section, with rubbish speed. But with a perfect run, this route has the potential to get a time of about 3 minutes and 43 seconds, which is 5 seconds faster than the current world record. In fact, the replay that I just showed you was recently done by Ryzo and is currently the second fastest time that's ever been done on EO2 Endurance. Not only does this route have one less cut than the current world record, all four of these cuts are relatively easy compared to the cuts in the world record group. Okay, so no overall is easy, especially doing four in a row, but if you want to get a really fast time on EO2 and you don't want to do the insanely difficult overalls that I'm going to show you in the next solution, then you should do this one. Now, the next solution that I'm going to show you has six cuts. Basically, it's the exact same route as the one that I just showed you. In fact, you do all four of the same cuts. But instead of doing the two 180 turns, you do two cuts instead. The two 180 turns cost a huge amount of time, and you also save some small pieces of track. So this route has huge potential. The problem is that one of the two new cuts is like the fifth and most difficult cut from the current world record route. The double overall, so to speak. Except it's worse, because you have to do it from the other direction, from checkpoint 18 to 8, rather than 8 to 18. And because of the way the track is shaped in that region, you have far less space to line up your car when approaching the cut. And, and the other one of the two new cuts is even worse. Not only do you have to do the overall over a gap, like the one I just showed you, but the road that you're trying to get to is raised up, so you have to go across and up over a gap. So it is possible, but you have to get this weird little bug slide when you're doing the over... Yeah, that's just... Yeah. It's, it's just nuts, and if someone ever got it, then I'll eat my hat. But anyway, I'm really looking forward to trying one of these two cuts. I just really want to give it a good try before Virtual can come along and get some crazy world record that's just impossible to beat. But there's one more solution, the ultimate solution, and it's even faster... Sorry, someone's calling. Oh, it's Virtual. Hey, man. Yep. Yeah, I know you beat the world record by 6 seconds. Everyone knows that already, I showed that in my last video. What do you mean, 6?
Well, anyway, this six cut route has a max potential for a time of about 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So this run could theoretically be improved by quite a lot. Honestly, if someone beat this run, I would eat. well, I'd be amazed. But there's still a chance to improve, because there is one more solution that's even faster, and this time I can guarantee you that no one has been able to do this yet, not even Witch Wolf. This is the fastest way to do EO2 Endurance. Once again, it's just a slight variation of the last solution that I showed you, the new current world record. The start is completely identical, but in the last solution, after doing the third cut and getting checkpoint 2 and 1, usually you turn right here to get checkpoint 3. This time we'll skip checkpoint 3 and save it for later. Instead, drive straight to checkpoint 4 and do the fourth and fifth cuts as normal, because it's so easy, you know. After that, section 3 is a little bit different. Turn left here instead of right. Grab these two checkpoints on the lower level in the opposite order. Then we do the first jump. The gap that you have to jump through is pretty tight, and you have to land perfectly, otherwise you won't have enough speed for the second jump. Usually this jump has no obstacles and is very straightforward, but with such low speed you barely make it over the wall, making it significantly harder. So finally we grab checkpoint 3 and do the final overall to the NASCAR section and finish the map. So in total this route has 8 cuts, 6 overalls and 2 jumps. This route has the potential for a time of about 3 minutes and 25 seconds, give or take. This is about 5 seconds more potential than the 6 cut route, and about 30 seconds more potential than the fastest cut that we knew existed until recently. Alright, that's all I've got for today. I've decided to do a Q&A for the comment section of this video, so feel free to ask anything you like. Just know that I am in New Zealand time, so it might take me a while to reply, but I'll try and do it as quickly as I can. Using this, a lot of potential for potential time. <laughs> Finally, section, section, which connects to the background. You can also make some quick cuts, quick cuts, quick cuts. There aren't many certain. There might. Virtual Joe. Virtual. 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 Between the map backwards. Uh -huh. Three cut look. Uh, 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 uh. Eventually, the proportion of new, new, unique, new, unique. But eventually, I was rewarded with the most perfect. <laughs> the most perfect. I was rewarded with the most. <laughs> the most perfect. Most. Most. I was rewarded with the most. The most perfect. And then to take a slightly modified. Modified. But I have a replay to help you guide. <laughs> help you guide me. One of the. <laughs> Perhaps you. <laughs> yeah, I know you beat the world record by six seconds. But there's even one. <laughs> there's even one. Hey. <laughs>